here. You may recognize these uh, concrete mono walks from the previous video. It's the same location, though a few days have gone by because you see, we had to do the tie ends. The Gamaco could only pour so much of these, uh, of these walks, but at, the, uh, at every CB and at every corner, there's tie ends that have to be formed and, and uh, poured by hand. But now that's accomplished and uh, we're back at this location to basically put the final lift of gravel on and uh, get this uh, job uh, ready for asphalt. I want to thank uh, Symphony for shooting this clip. Now a truck has just dumped a load of gravel and I'm trying to just get it spread out on the road in, in a uniform manner. As I push this gravel around, I'm trying to get the quantity proper, you see. Uh, even though uh, Teresa has uh, calculated how many trucks are supposed to go in this area, uh, we're st I'm still trying to sort this gravel around and, and uh, just get it get it so that the quantity is proper. So I try to achieve the, uh, the proper quantity of gravel in the center of the road first. And then I start to take it out to the, out toward the curb. Now in this, on this road, there will be, on this street, there's going to be uh, 100 mils of asphalt going here. So I'm keeping that in mind as I put this gravel to the side. So before we even started dumping gravel here, uh, the grade crew measured up the street. They boned it, put numbers on it. And then uh, Teresa did a quick calculation to determine how many trucks need to be dumped in certain sectors of the road. She broke it down in between the high points. And that's very helpful. That method is extremely handy if a bunch of trucks come in at the same time. You see, if the gravel trucks are coming in at a slower pace and if they're coming in uh, at a constant pace, I might have time to keep up with the trucks dumping, you see. But if a bunch of trucks come in at the same time, well, then it's handy to know to uh, exactly where to dump the trucks or if you're over dumping in a certain area or under dumping in a certain area. So it really does, uh, the, using that method uh, of, of calculating how many trucks go in certain sectors, it really does help. So now <coughs> I'm about to place this windrow up against the curb. This is a, a, a crucial step because uh, if you do it properly, uh, it saves a lot of work for the uh, for the labor crew. They don't you don't get too much gravel up on the curb, so they don't have a whole bunch to clean off. I usually do it this way: I put a windrow there, and then I get my front wheel just outside the windrow. And I do it just like this. I trickle it in. You can adjust your blade. And you see, eventually, like I say, there's going to be 100 millimeters, four inches of asphalt going on this, on this street. But right now, you see, that gravel is loose. It's completely loose. So in order to achieve the finished 100 mils you need to bring the gravel pretty well flush to the top of the concrete and by the time you pack it down by the time you wheel pack it it'll drop for, you know a lot 
And so you, you pretty well have to do it the way I'm doing it here right now and get the gravel flush to the top of concrete. And eventually it'll end up being down 80 mils or something anyway, or at least at least 50 mils by the time you wheel pack it, you see. You're going to see this in a minute here. Now, as I put my machine in reverse here, James happens to be coming up behind me with the skid steer. And he let me know over the radio that he was coming up behind me. And that's always a good thing to do. Even though I was aware, I'd seen him in my mirror and I was aware that he was coming up behind me. It's always a good thing to do because uh, the odd time it might save an incident. Placing this gravel along the curb is a balance between not enough and too much. If you place too much along there, you'll end up with uh, excess gravel on top of the curb that the laborers will have to take off. And if you don't, if you don't put enough, you'll end up with a low spot along the curb. Now you see, as I'm wheel packing this, you'll notice how much it's dropping. You know, it's dropping. As I run my wheel over it, it's dropping a lot. It's dropping almost down to grade. And uh, that's why you have to initially put it in pretty much flush with the top of the asphalt if you're, you know, if you're uh, going for 100 mils of asphalt for the finish grade. So now, as I'm reversing here and continuing to wheel pack, I line up my back tires using my rear view mirror. It seems to work pretty good. And that way I can get my tire just outside of the previous one, you see? And by the way, the mirrors on, the, on this grader are a little wider than usual. They're actually uh, mirrors designed for a 980 loader uh, rather than uh, a 14H grader. I liked, I deliberately put them on because uh, I rely on my mirrors so much. Now, some grader operators prefer to work with the rubber tired packer at this point. Instead of just wheel packing it with a grader, they prefer to have a rubber tired packer come in behind them and uh, and pack the gravel behind them. It's just a matter of preference. I just, I just uh, would sooner just do it myself. Now, as I'm cutting along here now, I'm trying for about 80 millimeters along the, I'm trying to guess about 80 millimeters along the concrete right now. Don't forget the finish grade is going to be a hundred millimeters of asphalt. So I'm right now I'm trying to rough it in at about 80 and I'll be watching my slope meter and trying to accomplish about 3%. And don't forget the finish quarter crown will be about 6%. And as, as we finally, as we cut the gutter right down to grade, we'll increase that slope on the quarter crown from 3%. And I'm going to, I'm hoping that we'll be able to accomplish the 6% as we, you know, completely cut the gutter down to 100. That's how I, that's how I do it. You see, as I'm cutting along the curb here, I'm basically roughing in the quarter crown at the same time. And I'm also trying to put just a slight amount of pressure on the curb. You do have to touch it, but just barely. And that does take a bit of practice. But if you put too much pressure on the curb, it can not only damage the curb, but it also... Uh, kind of prematurely wears out the, uh, the uh, edge of your blade. Now, as you're doing this, you don't want to create uh, 
high spots and low spots. Uh, you you want to keep your you want to always uh, keep your gravel in a uniform manner. Now right now I'm doing a little bit of back weight, and it's probably because I want to take a little bit of gravel back to the start of this little segment. You see, I'm probably aware that there's a little low area there, and I want to fill it in. So I'm just using my back blade to take it back there. It saves me from turning around. I also like to use my back blade on a small windrow to avoid the grater from going into a bounce. Every grater operator is aware of that bounce that can happen to the grater, especially when you're trying to feather out a small windrow in gravel. It, your grater can go into a rhythmic bounce and that won't stop bouncing and it gets enough to drive you crazy and it's also hard to remove once you start that rhythmic bounce it's hard to get it out of the gravel so i use the back blade to do that as well to just to make sure that it doesn't go into that bounce and now here i'm just adjusting the quarter crown a little bit i was probably aware that i was at a little bit more than three percent so now I'm just uh, lightly adjusting that quarter crown. And now this side of the street will be placed. And now I'll start to focus on the other side of the street. Well, now the ground crew will come along and uh, clean this curb off so that when we uh, cut the gutter right down to final grade, we can, we can see the concrete better. And... Uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, water this and pack it and uh, after that the next step will be to uh, cut the gutter down to final grade down to 100 mils so in this clip i've got the uh, camera attached to my hard hat and uh, rob and i are cutting the gutter down to 100 mils. Rob has kind of come up with a little method there where he kicks the ridge of gravel off and, and does his measurement there with the stick. Gives me a little guidance to go a, a wee bit deeper. Now I am going around a CB. Trying not to hurt the CB too much and hold that 100 as, as well as I can. And uh, I'll also be uh, watching my slope meter right now and uh, trying to hold on 6%, you see. Now that I'm generating uh, more gravel in the gutter, then I can use that gravel to uh, increase the, the slope on the quarter crown from about 3% to about 6%. And now when we go to measure up the uh, a quarter crown, oh, hopefully there'll just be a, a little bit of a cut on it. Hopefully the quarter crown will either be great or just a, a slight cut on it. And if I, if I get it on about 6%, well, uh, that's how it'll usually turn out. I'm focusing my attention right on the corner of my blade trying to hold on a hundred there and I'm watching Rob through my peripheral vision there waiting for a one up or one down just to keep me on grade. Rob and Teresa are measuring out from the curb just to make sure that they've got the quarter crown in the right spot. Well, now we are final grading the road and getting it prepared for asphalt. Thanks to James for um, doing the camera work on this next clip. So here we are stringing out the road and what this does is this allows Vern to be able to tell exactly where our quarter measurement is. So when we do this, we'll do it in three different spots. We'll do the quarter crown, which is what Rob's doing right now. And then we'll do the crown in the middle and then we'll do the other quarter crown on the other side, just beside Petra. And Vern will just chase in behind and what he'll do is he'll trim out all the extra we don't need and if we're on grade he'll just leave it alone and we'll do this probably three or four times in a in a road construction setup 
And what this allows for is better accuracy when we're doing our grades and making sure that we're staying on par. And there we have a fill of two. You want to say hi to your mom, Rob? Hello, mom. Here's mom. <laughs> The dots are just grayed. And we'll check every couple meters, and if you notice, we put the rod right on the end of the curb, and then try to pull the string really tight. Tight like Tony the Twiga. And as you can see in the background, there's Vern chasing us along. Some of the tools we use on site are pretty basic, but they're really accurate and work really well. I'll just tape for this little bit and then I'll go grab that last half buggy load. And as you can tell by all the dots, Vern did an awesome job on his first pass. Here we are back on board the grader. Now the quarter crown area is complete and I'm just moving this windrow over to the center of the road where we can pick it up with a buggy. And when I'm doing this, I usually just articulate over about halfway and I hold on about 3% on my slope meter. Now I'm careful that I don't disturb uh, the quarter crown area. It's on grade, so I don't want to touch it anymore. And uh, if I, like I say, if I hold on about 3% here, usually there'll still be a little bit of cut on the crown when we go to measure it up. When we're picking up excess gravel with the buggy, I always make sure the windrow is dead center on the road. That way we won't uh, disturb grade on the quarter crown because the quarter crowns are complete and we want to keep them that way. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we will see you next time.